Okay, so let's work another cap M problem. We have here the risk-free rate is 4%. The required return on the market is 12%. What's the required return on an asset with a beta of 1.5? Well, we have all the information we need. We can plug this quite easily into our capital asset pricing model, which says that the expected return on any asset has to be equal to its risk-free rate plus the beta on the asset times the market risk premium, which is the expected return on the market, minus the risk-free rate. And we get 0.16 or 16%. That's our expected return. Now we wanna know, what is the reward to risk ratio in equilibrium? Remember the reward to risk ratio or the, uh, what's also called the sharp ratio is a ratio that must be true. And it is the slope of the security market line, right? The reward to risk ratio is the slope of the security market line. So it is the reward divided by the risk or the difference between the expected return and the risk-free rate. Right, so here is the slope of our security market line using the market portfolio as our secondary asset, just like in the example in the lectures. The expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate divided by the beta on the market minus the beta on the risk-free rate. This is the reward part. This is the risk part. And remember that this is the slope of our uh, security market line. Now, by definition, because every asset must fall onto the security market line, the slope for every asset must be the same, meaning the reward to risk ratio for our random asset A has to be equal to the reward to risk ratio for our market portfolio. So that these two ratios have to be the same. Right? And we can see that they're the same based on our calculation here. So start with the market portfolio. That's what we know. The expected return on the market is 12%. The risk-free rate is 4%. Beta on the market, by definition, remember, always 1%. Beta on the risk-free rate, again, by definition, always 0%. So this equals 8. This is the reward to risk ratio. Now in equilibrium, that just means that these two things have to be equal with each other because by definition, all assets must fall onto the security market line. So they all have the same reward to risk ratio. Now we just calculated the expected return on asset A, 16% minus the risk-free rate. But our beta for our asset is 1.5 instead of one. So it has a higher expected return. It also has a higher risk. Beta for the risk rate is always zero. And notice that if you do this, you again get 12 divided by 1.5, which is eight. And this must be true, okay? It must be true. Now let's, uh, let's take it a little bit farther. Let's say, what is the required return on a portfolio consisting of 40% of the asset above and the rest in an asset with the average amount of systematic risk, right? And so when you see required return here, you can think expected return. What is the expected return on this portfolio? And this, the average amount of systematic risk, well, by definition, this is the market portfolio. So essentially, we're just asking, if I form a portfolio that has some, that is some proportion, or 60% of uh, the market portfolio, 40% of our asset A, What's the expected return and beta? Well, the expected return on a portfolio can be calculated as the weighted average of the expected returns of the assets in the portfolio. And I know that the weight of my asset A is then the expected return of my asset A, both of which is calculated here plus the weight of the market portfolio times the expected return of the market portfolio, which was given above. 
So I have 40% of my portfolio in asset A, which is earning 16% expected return. And then 60% of the portfolio, the remainder is invested in the market, which earns 12%. And that gives me an expected return for my portfolio of 13.6%. Beta here for the portfolio is the weighted average of my portfolio betas, right, of my asset betas. So that is 40% of my portfolio is invested in A, and A has a beta of 1.5. 60% of my portfolio is invested in the market portfolio, and the market portfolio has a beta of 1. So the beta of my portfolio is 1.2. Again, I reduce my maximum expected return, but I reduce my risk as well. Ideally, I reduce my risk by more than I reduce my expected return.